The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. In the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem asking, Where is the child who has been born King of the Jews? For we observed his star at its rising and have come to pay him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was frightened in all Jerusalem with him. And calling together all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. They told him in Bethlehem of Judea, for so it has been written by the prophet, and you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For from you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod secretly called for the wise men and learned from them the exact time when the star had appeared. Then he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the child. When you have found him, bring me word, so that I may also go and pay him homage. When they had heard the king, they set out, and there ahead of them went the star that they had seen at its rising, until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw that the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. On entering the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, and they knelt down and paid him homage. Then opening their treasure chests, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they left for their own country by another road. This is the gospel of the Lord. One of my favorite quotes from Pope Benedict XVI is this, the world offers you comfort, but you are not made for comfort, you are made for greatness. And Pope Benedict was not talking about this sense of greatness as fame or fortune or popularity or success, but this greatness in being a servant and disciple of the Lord, to be filled with joy, and be filled with the gift of Christ that we live our lives being sowers of good seeds, are filled with great joy and sharing that light and that joy, joy with those around us, especially those who are in need. And yet at Christmas, sometimes we get caught up, the temptation is to kind of look and seek that comfort. You know, being able to kind of Think about the what's of Christmas and not the who of Christmas. You know, what did you get for Christmas? Father Pedro, what did you get for Christmas? Anyway, we won't get it. Lots of chocolates and different things. We're very thankful for that in the office. Now we have to figure out which gym we're going to go work out at. Um, but, you know, what we got for Christmas, what we didn't get for Christmas, what we did during the Christmas holidays, and all those are good things that we do. But we can't kind of just stay there at Christmas and kind of sit back and be comfortable because when we celebrate Christmas we celebrate the who of Christmas who do we receive who do we make room for who do we embrace and that is Jesus our Lord and King you know during Advent I talked about making space for him making room for him to come at Christmas and then at uh, the Christmas Eve, Christmas Day Masses, I preached about the fact that not only do we make room for him and we welcome him in, into that space, but we're called to embrace him in love, in a powerful encounter, an encounter that transforms us. Today we celebrate, as Father Pedro said at the beginning of Mass, the epiphany of the Lord. Epiphany means revelation discovery and for us it's like a second Christmas that through the wise men through the three kings um, who represent the nations of the world 
that Jesus came to save all, and all the nations of the world are come to pay him homage. We recognize Jesus as Lord, King, Master. And what's interesting in this story that we hear from the Gospel of Matthew, that the three wise men following this star were searching, not for a what, but for who, for the Savior of the world. And they were led by a star that guides them, and they go to Jerusalem, and ask King Herod and others, saying, well, where's, where's the king? The newborn king is coming. We're searching for him. And Herod and the scribes and the Pharisees can't see this because they're caught up in the comfort of their lives, their position, their authority, their success, their prestige. And this newborn king becomes a little bit of a threat to that comfort. And instead of Herod joining in the search, he says to them, you know, find him, let him, you know, let me know where he is and I'll go pay him homage. For us in the rea realities of our faith, and as we continue to celebrate Christmas, Christmas goes all the way until the baptism of the Lord, so the decorations will still be up next weekend. Right? St. John Paul II kept his Christmas decorations up until the presentation of the Lord, which is the 2nd of February. If you keep them up that long, you might as well just keep them up for next Christmas, right? <laughs> but we, we decorated so beautifully. If you're saying, oh, is it coming down? I said, no, we, we, we decorated so nicely, we want to go all the way. Christmas isn't over. The three wise men remind us that we too are called to search for our Lord and King. Because Christmas is about, not about things or the what's, it's about who it is, Jesus, our Lord and Master. And the three wise men remind us that we are called to search, we are called to find, then we're called to pay homage. Because when the three wise men arrived and finally found. They were filled with joy, as is described in the Gospel of Matthew. Finally, their journey, which was a long one, which would not have been an easy one. You know, they, you know, it wasn't comfortable traveling. They were searching. Maybe they were going to different places that, um, you know, Jesus wasn't there. They were following this star. When would this end? There was no GPS. You know, all these different things. It was a long, hard journey. And to get to encounter Jesus, you don't come expecting something from him. They come bearing gifts, gold, frankincense, and myrrh, and they pay him homage, and that's enough. And then they go back a different way, and it wasn't just to avoid Herod. So whenever we encounter Jesus, he changes who we are. And them going by a different path meant for them their lives were going to be different in being proclaimers of the good news, knowing that their Messiah has come and what a difference that makes for us so as we celebrate epiphany we're called to be like the three wise men who seek to not only encounter and embrace christ but if we truly encounter him in the scriptures in the eucharist that we celebrate in the worship here but also in our daily lives if we encounter him we cannot help but to bear him gifts not to seek things from him, but to offer, ultimately, the greatest gift is ourselves to him as servants, as disciples, as ministers of the good news, as sowers of the good seed. Because if we encounter Jesus and that doesn't happen to us, then we've missed it somehow. We haven't encountered him. We've encountered what? Christmas. But if we truly encounter Jesus the Lord in our lives and we seek him out, we follow the light, the star to him in sacrament, but also in each other and in our service, our lives are overflowing with joy. And we want to give our lives to him. How can we really do that? Well, I want to conclude my reflections this morning with a prayer that uh, we've heard before. But I think it's a practical and real prayer because it invites us to be agents of change, to be ministers of the good news in our relationships, in our service, in our outreach, in the gift of our families. And it's the uh, prayer of St. Francis. 
that calls us to action, calls us to be these sowers of the good news, and I think in a real way helps us and others to truly embrace Jesus and to be overwhelmed with joy by him. As you will notice, the print on this page is bigger, which is great because I can't see as good as I used to. So the prayer of St. Francis. Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. Where there is hatred, let me sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. And where there is sadness, joy. O Divine Master, grant that I may not so much seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we receive, it is in pardoning that we are pardoned, and it is in dying that we are born to eternal life. The world offers you comfort, but you are not made for comfort. You were made for greatness.